created by Daniel Zadozek, Detective Force starring Boris Zeg in the lead role, is finally released on Netflix. As the suspense thriller releases on the streaming platform, we thought this would be the perfect time to give you an overview and discuss some hidden details of the series so that you can have the best viewing experience. A spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the show. So if you haven't been able to catch up with the series yet, maybe you should pause the video and get back to watching it on Netflix. But if you are done watching it already, kindly follow us through this video. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. It helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on. Detective Force begins in an undisclosed location in the mountains of Poland where the camera slowly pans around a cabin while heavy music plays in the distance. The dimly lit cabin with covers and shutters on the windows and doors feels unnatural from the start and then some shocking revelations are made. We see a man held hostage in the hut with extensive torture marks on his body which unfortunately are only the beginning of his worries. Soon another person who is clearly the kidnapper cuts off a finger from the hostages hand on which there is a transparent gold ring engraved with the letter R. The hostage's loud screams give way to the scene to introduce our main character Victor Faust, who desperately runs far away through the forest with much frustration. The series then takes us back a few days when Faust becomes physically intimate with a young woman named Agatha and the two appear to have been involved for quite some time even though they are not in an official relationship. The reasons however are different starting from the age difference between the two and also from the fact that Agatha suffers from serious mental health problems. But the main reason why the two don't make it official is that Agatha is actually the daughter of Edmund Osika, the police chief of Frost's department. Force is a detective and officer in the local police force and therefore Edmund is his boss. Although the boss is aware of his daughter's involvement, he can only ask Force to stay away. However, the entire topic and tone change when Edmund and Force travel to Givon to see a crime scene. A corpse is found attached to a large metal crucifix on one of the mounds, suggesting that the body was left to convey some meaning. The police investigators initially try to pass it off as a suicide because they don't want the media to cause any madness. So Frost also tells the same thing to a journalist named Olga Srebska. While Olga manages to enter the crime scene, she and Frost exchange some heated words before becoming friends. But before the small snowy town can resolve this mysterious death, a second body appears left in a more ritualistic manner making it clear that both acts are by the same perpetrator. As Faust and Olga investigate the serial murders together, even more shocking revelations about the past are made. While examining the first body on the crucifix stand, Faust found a coin placed in the man's mouth and a similar looking coin was also found on the body of the second victim, a young woman. The pieces appear old and feature similar engravings and designs. As the detective investigates further, it turns out that the coins were aureus, a Roman gold coins with gothic design dating from around the 2nd century. Although the historical context of the coins is clear, their connection to the murders is not revealed until much later in the series. At this point, Faust is mysteriously removed from the case by his boss Edmund and the reason for this appears to be that the higher-ups in the police department don't like Faust being so close to media personnel. The main character is instead moved to another case, the investigation of a young man named Roswadowski. Roswadowski is the son of a local politician and the young man has a habit of disappearing appearing regularly for a few days until he is found heavily drugged, drunk or involved in another scandalous house parties. Therefore, Faust wastes no time or effort investigating this case and instead continues to secretly investigate the murders. However, when the body of a third victim is also found, it seems that Faust may have stuck to the case assigned to him because the man is Roswaduski. The young man's body had been dumped by a river and although his head had been severed, his identity was confirmed by tattoos and other physical characteristics. The politician father also receives a severed finger with an iconic ring that his son wore, making it clear that the hostage seen at the very beginning of the show was indeed Roswadowski. An important lead is found when the first victim's phone movements are tracked and the final location is found to be the headquarters of an organization called Mountain Remembrance. The foundation is a historical society whose mission is to preserve records of the Goral ethnographic group, particularly its history 
in the Tatra Mountains and the Polish Highlands, also called Pudhali. When Faust and Olga sneak into the headquarters and search the police, they end up finding a hidden photo from a terrible incident from the past. The photo shows some men posing in front of a couple they have just hanged from a tree branch. This photo becomes extremely important to Detective Frost's case as it is soon revealed that the three victims murdered by the serial killer were all descendants of the men who had taken part in the gruesome atrocity in the photo. The photo was taken during the dangerous time of the Second World War, which historically affected Poland greatly. Although the Gorals and others living in the region were primarily opposed to the Nazis, some began working as collaborators for the fascist regime and continued to harass and kill the local population. The photo actually shows such a group which mercilessly kidnapped and killed the couple, even making fun of their misery. As the show progresses, it is revealed that the leader of this group, a rich man named Leo Lewotowski, is still alive as so obviously because the next victim of the serial killer who is surely hunting for Nazi collaborators from history. But the question still remains as to why these collaborators were killed only now, so many years after the incident. The answer to this question is revealed when Faust discovers that a woman named Helena is involved in the murders. During the past Godel persecution, a woman escaped torture and a few years after the war ended, she returned to the city pregnant. Before her death, she gave birth to a baby girl named Helena and it was abundantly clear that Helena was the child of rape. However, she never found out and Helena only discovered her true past when she was an adult and researching her heritage. The woman also discovered that Lovatarsky himself was her father and then developed a revenge plan to punish all the perpetrators and collaborators of these terrible crimes. Faust realizes that the woman happens to be the same Helena who ran the orphanage where he grew up. Once he and Olga return to the Mountain Remembrance building, they realize that it was not Helena who directly committed one of the murders. The woman wanted revenge for the atrocities committed against her mother and other residents of the area and it was for this reason that she hired an old acquaintance named Eo Elijah. The man had grown up in the same orphanage since childhood and this allowed Helena to manipulate Elijah into committing the murders for her. However, there is a huge twist to the story as Elijah has his own motivations behind the murders and isn't simply following Helena's orders. The title Beast of Gion has been assigned to the serial killer by both the media and some law enforcement authorities. Among the latter, police prosecutor Dominica Wedris Hansen repeatedly uses the term to refer to the killer while she speaks to the press and of course the name sticks. Although it becomes very clear that the Beast of Gion was actually Eo Elijah, the exact reason for his killing is not entirely clear. Although Helena believed she let let Elijah commit the murders, he actually acted on his own initiative. First, Elijah seems guilty of punishing Nazi collaborators and all their existing descendants, which is why he even killed Selena because she is Lotarski's daughter. However, Elijah's main goal was not to carry out a deadly punishment but to attract the attention of the main character Victor Faust. Both Helena and Elijah knew Faust as the latter had grown up in the same orphanage. This was why Helena paid Edmund to get Faust out of the serial murder case because she didn't want him in involved in the case. On the other hand, Faust and Elijah had been best friends throughout their childhood until a particular incident in their early teenage years. While Helena was not in her room, the two boys sneaked into her room and tried to steal a locket that the woman always wore. In fact, this locket was an odious piece that Helena might have received from her mother. It seems that the coins are reminders of the torture the Godels were subjected to and that is why similar coins were left on the corpses. Neither Faust nor Elijah had a specific reason for stealing the locket as they had only done it out of curiosity but Helena clearly took this misdeed very seriously. As they were about to get caught, Elijah covered for Faust, taking all the blame and helping his best friend escape punishment. At this point, the two boys had even sworn to be brothers for life and Elijah was extremely committed to this promise. He took all the hits but was shocked to see that his best friend was adopted by a family shortly after. Originally, the family also considered adopting Elijah but his past tainted by the theft of the locket discouraged them and the boy's life path completely changed. While the protagonist was adopted by the Faust family and grew up to become a detective, Eo Elijah grew up with a strong sense of vengeance within him to find the brother he once made and punish him for his betrayal. But Elijah also has a different identity in the context of the series since he is in reality Gjord, the husband of prosecutor Dominica. When Faust has a modern sketch of his friend made and sent to Dominica's office, the wife does her best to protect her husband and places the blame on Victor Faust who becomes the means 
suspect in the case for a while. At the end of the series, Eliza takes Agatha hostage and threatens to kill her to attract the detective. This is exactly what happens when Foss desperately searches for the cabin where the attacker tortured and killed his victims. However, the detective arrives too late to save Agatha and the young woman is already dead. Eventually, a large fight breaks out between Faust and Eliza, causing both men to fall out of the window and seriously injure themselves. When the police finally arrive, only Faust is found injured along with the bodies of Agatha and another young policeman. The detective fears that the killer must have gone over to the house of Nina, his most trusted colleague, with whom he had also left Olga at the time. Foss and Olga had now become lovers and so the man rushed to the place only to find it empty. Nina's body is found with a coin next to her indicating that Eliza killed her. But there is no sign of the killer or Olga and a provocative scene at the end reveals Eliza lying semi-conscious in a van with Olga driving the vehicle. This could suggest several things starting with the possibility that Eliza managed to kill Nina but was then outsmarted by Olga who captured him. However, it is also entirely possible that Olga has always been on Elijah's side and that she will now reveal her true nature and reunite with him, perhaps taking him to a safe place. However, what exactly Olga is doing and what her plan is won't be revealed until Detective Force Season 2 if such a sequel is ever made. The Show is a new Polish crime series on Netflix based on a series of popular novels about the titular detective Victor Faust by Remigius Mraz. As the name suggests, the series shows police officer Victor Faust caught in the middle of a series of sinister murders in the Tata Mountains, with the deaths increasingly linked to horrific personnel and historical past. Although it's a bit shorter than it should have been, Detective Faust is a decent watch, mainly due to the visual scenery, the performances and shiny production value. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching Detective Faust on Netflix. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema series. See you at the next one. And for the timing, we are signing off. The Wizania and I'll be back.